Food is the basic necessity for human survival. Whether the economy is good or bad, we all need to eat. And that is what makes food producing an all-time attractive business to invest in. In fact, most of the time, when people tell me that they want to start a business, they will always say, I want to start a cafe or a restaurant. Why? Because even if you have no experience in running any business, you will be familiar with cafes and restaurants because almost all of us have been a customer to a food-related business. So today in this episode, we will be introducing to you the top three food producers that are considered blue chip stocks in Malaysia. Hi, welcome back to Mr. Money TV, your favorite financial edutainment network. Here we are, all about learning finance in a fun way. So if you like that, click the subscribe button and turn on the notification to follow us for the latest video. Also do follow us on Facebook and Instagram for the latest activities and updates. Well, as we have mentioned before, investing in stocks is actually about owning a piece of a business. So since it's about investing in business, what is better than investing in a business that we are a regular customer of their product, right? And I am pretty sure that we are a consumer of the products from these companies that we are going to talk about today, whether we notice them or not. The first company is Nestle Malaysia Bahad. Nestle is a multinational food and drinks manufacturer from Switzerland, founded in 1866. It is currently the largest food company in the world, and they have their presence in Malaysia since 1912. Yes, that is more than 100 years. Almost all of us have been a consumer of their products since we are young. Remember the favorite Milo truck that visited our schools when we were kids? I remember the excitement on everyone's face when we anticipated the arrival of the Milo truck. Smells so good, right, Milo? Well, today, if you want to have a late night supper, you will order a Malaysian favorite Maggi Mee Goreng from the Mamak restaurant. Here we have Maggi Mee. Or maybe you're thirsty. Why not order a Milo dinosaur ice? Or you just need a morning coffee boost. Next cafe got chocolate. Oi, what's this? Some also. Aye, enough lah. Yeah, Nestum also. Today, Nestle operates six manufacturing factories in Malaysia. A fun fact for you, do you know that Nestle Malaysia has an important role in the global Nestle world? Let me tell you why. As you know, Islam is the second largest religion in the world. The strong growth in the Islamic population in the world has led to a growth in the halal food production market. Based on study by Statistica, the halal food market is expected to grow to 2.6 trillion by 2024, and Nestle Malaysia is is the largest halal producer in the Nestle world. They produce more than 500 halal certified products. In fact, 20% of the total production from Malaysia is exported to more than 50 countries across the world. From this, we can see that Nestle Malaysia plays a significant role in the expansion and growth of halal food market for Nestle's global business. Nestle Malaysia is listed on Bursa Malaysia in 1989 at five ringgit and 20 cents per share. Today, in 2020, its share price is traded at 140 ringgit per share. Imagine if you had bought 1,000 units of Nestle shares in 1989 for 5,200 ringgit. Today, that is worth 140,000. At this point, Nestle is valued at 32.6 billion market capitalization on Bursa Malaysia, trading at more than 48 times of its earning, making it the largest food manufacturer in Malaysia. And in 2019, they made a revenue of 5.5 billion ringgit. That is a decrease of 0.76% from the previous year. And in the same year, their net earnings was 673 million ringgit. That is an increase of 2.13%. This is due to the lower expenses and financing costs and taxes in 2019. Also in 2019, they paid out a dividend of 2 ringgit and 80 cents per share. Currently, the largest shareholder of Nestle Malaysia Berhad is their mother company, Nestle Switzerland. They own 72% of the company at this point, followed by EPF, who owns 7.9% of Nestle Malaysia. Over the years, Nestle has proven itself to be a strong company that grows through the years in all economic conditions. In the course of 100 years in Malaysia, they have built many of the favorite brands we consume that are staple in Malaysia's diet, such as Maggi, Milo, Kit Kat, and so on. Literally products that we grow up with, and food products that we consume whether we are rich or poor. 
poor and regardless of market condition. On top of that, the strategic role of Nestle Malaysia Bahad in the halal market globally. So I would say the future of Nestle certainly looks bright in my opinion. The second food manufacturing company listed in the KLCI is PPB Group Bahad. PPB Group Bahad started off as a sugar cane cultivation and milling business by Tan Sri Robert Kwok in 1968. But today, PPB Group has exited the sugar business but transformed itself to be a diversified conglomerate which engaged in food production, agriculture, waste management and film distribution. PPB Group Bahad's main business is in the grains and agriculture business which makes up of 68% of their revenue in 2019. FFM Group, their agribusiness subsidiary, owns five flour mills in Malaysia and four more across Vietnam, Thailand and Indonesia. They are also one of the key feed millers in Malaysia and operate five feed mills in Malaysia. Finally, they also operate two broiler breeder farms with combination production capacity of 3 million broiler chicks per month and layer farm with a monthly production capacity of 20 million eggs. The company also owns the popular bread brand Massimo. Hey, Gardenia lah, this one not Massimo. Massimo ah, not Gardenia, uh, which contribute to 13% of their group revenue. Do you know that PPB also owns one of the largest cinema chain in Malaysia? Yes, they own Golden Screen Cinema, Sendirian Bahad, GSC. GSC operate across 37 locations in Malaysia and 18 locations across Vietnam. GSC is also the largest film distributor in Malaysia, distributing films throughout Malaysia, Brunei, Vietnam, Myanmar and Cambodia. This part of the business contributes to top percent of the group revenue in 2019. PPB also operate an environmental engineering and utility business which contributes to 4% of their group revenue, a small part of it. Well, this business is involved in water engineering, sewage treatment, solid waste management and flood mitigation. Finally, they are also involved in property business. They are involved in owning and managing retail malls like Cheras Leisure Mall in KL and White Oasis Arcade in Penang. They are also involved in property development and project management. However, this is just a small part of their business which contribute to only around 1% of their total group revenue. The group recorded a revenue of 4.6 billion in 2019, an increase of 3.4% against the previous year. They also recorded a 1.1 billion in net earning for the year of 2019. That's an increase of 7.2% against the previous year. Currently, PPB Group is valued at 26.01 billion market capitalization on Bursa Malaysia, and its share is traded in 22.9 times its earnings at the price of 18 ringgit and 62 cents. Finally, the third company is Fraser and Neef Holdings Bahad, which is FNN. The company was founded in Singapore in 1883 and listed on Bursa Malaysia in 1970. They are one of the largest consumer food producing company in Malaysia with a market capitalization of 11.74 billion. Over the course of more than 100 years, FNN has built multiple brands that are household staple in today's society, which I'm sure that you have been a consumer of. Well, have you ever felt dehydrated? Have 100 plus. Need some fresh juice? Get some sun keys. Maybe you just want to have a favorite Malaysian teh tarik. Then you need some teapot condensed milk for sure. Hello, teh tarik or your fresh sato. Okay. See ya. Okay, anyway, today FNN operate eight plants across Malaysia. There are three beverage plants, three dairy plants, and two mineral water plants. In combination, they produce 20 brands in 13 categories. The three business pillars of FNN are food and beverage in Malaysia, Thailand, and export business. In Malaysia, FNN product is the market leader for the category of carbonated soft drink, ready to drink tea, sweetened condensed milk, and evaporated milk category, contributing to 2.2 billion ringgit revenue to the group in 2019. In Thailand, they are the market leader 
Butler for the sweetened condensed milk category and evaporated milk category. The Thailand market contributed 1.9 billion to the group's revenue in 2019. Products that are produced by FNN are also 100% halal certified, making it well positioned for the global growth of halal food market. Currently, FNN Holding is exporting their products to 75 countries worldwide. And the top exported product is condensed and evaporated milk. Their shares are currently traded at 32 ringgit per share. That is 28 times of its earnings. And in 2019, FNN Group reported a revenue of 4.1 billion ringgit and net earnings of 410 million ringgit. Their revenue in 2019 was a decrease of 0.8% from the previous year. But the net earnings increased by 6.5% from the previous year. Well, due to the growth in halal food market, the food producing business in Malaysia are in a strategic position. With an expected market size of 2.6 trillion globally, the increasing demand for halal certified food is unstoppable. And Malaysia has one of the most respected halal certification. Our halal food products are golden standard in the global market. So these are the three blue chip food companies that are listed on Bursa Malaysia. What do you think? Do you think you'll be interested to invest in them? Share with us your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for watching. See you soon. Eh, aneh, aneh. Bagi satu Nescafe tarik. Sana rabot, sana habis lah. Oi, mana boleh macam ni lah. Oi.